race that was set before us. We have a lot of starters, but we don't have as many finishers. Paul said, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, and I have what? Finished. Why don't you get a hymn book? I want to sing a song this morning. Is that all right? I believe when we get to the finish line, we'll hear this song, number three in your hymn book. Let's stand one more time. Number three. We need God's amazing grace, and his grace is still what? It's amazing. Absolutely. God's amazing grace. Anybody got a harmonica? Accordion? Uh, who's a piano player in here? Here she comes. That's all right, Sister Julie. I thought she was going to the nursery. I thank God for these dear kind ladies bearing these, these babies, don't you? Praise the Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I am found. You need to come to the altar. Come on. Was blind. But now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. Come on, that grace appeared the hour I first believed. God's still calling when we then there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Let's sing that third verse. I think we missed it a while ago. Hey, if you're missing something in your life, it may be God's amazing grace. You ever wondered about that? Maybe there's some void. Maybe there's some emptiness in your soul today. Maybe there's a big hole where God belongs. Why don't you just ask God to interject you with his amazing, amazing grace on the third verse. Praise the Lord. Through many dangers, tools, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. We're going to have the piano to fade out. We're going to praise God on this one. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> I think we need to lose our dignity just a little bit. He went all the way to the cross for us. And we don't want to shed our old flesh. And get in the spirit of God. Don't be ashamed of the gospel when the Lord passes by. You be sure to witness. You be sure to testify of his goodness. All right. 
Now the disciples, these two disciples we're studying about this morning, were on the Emmaus Road. Not the Damascus Road. I believe the Emmaus Road was just as important as the Damascus Road, maybe even more so. Because it was a powerful event in the lives of these people, and it would encourage and influence the rest of the disciples. You know what you do? A lot of people don't think this, but it's true. What you do absolutely either discourages or, or encourages people to live for God. A lot of people think, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter what I do because, uh, you know, I, I don't affect anyone. You do. People are watching you. Your testimony counts. You either have a good one or you have a bad one. Either you're on the right road or you're the wrong road. Either you're on the narrow road that leads unto life or you're on that big broad road that leads unto destruction. We want you on the right road this morning. You ever got off on the wrong road? It don't take long. Even for Christians, you know, don't take but one wrong decision to get on the wrong road, to get on the wrong track. My soul, God help us this morning. Hey, you know, we hear about this road to Damascus that Paul got transformed on. But has there ever been a road in which God put you on that your whole life, your entire life was totally transformed? From the very nature and course of your whole existence changed right before your eyes. I remember where the Lord found me. I remember what I was doing when he found me. And I remember old things have passed away. Yes. Behold, all things are becoming new. We don't just quote that. We know that. That's not just easy preaching. I'm telling you, that is for real living. God has changed me completely. I'm not the man I used to be. I'm sure not what I want to be, but I'm not the man I used to be. I know that's for sure. And praise God. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he makes a difference. When he passes by your way, if there's not been a change, folks, something's bad wrong with your testimony. Hey, did you know he appeared? Here we are just after the resurrection today in the, in the word of God. Did you know he appeared to over 500 people at one time? We don't hear their names mentioned in the Bible. But they were witnesses of the resurrection. Wow. Can you imagine being able to say, I literally saw with my own eyes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I saw him face to face. And one day we'll see him face to face with Christ my Savior. Yes, sir. -y. Hey, Jesus appeared before the church. Did you know what he did? He did just like you and me did. It says in Hebrews uh, 2, in verse, I believe it is verse number 12, you'll find it there where Jesus in his resurrected, glorified body, he sang praises in the church that he established. Did you know Jesus established his church? He's the founder of the New Testament church. He has the right to come in to this church uh, facility this morning. The church is not the building. It's not the cinder. It's not the blocks. It's not the, uh, uh, all, of the, the, uh, the, uh, all this beautiful uh, edifice here that the Lord has blessed us with. Oh, no. The church is the assembly of baptized believers carrying out the great commission and the will of the Lord for our life. We're the church. And the Lord has the right, if he's the head of the church, you'll find that in Ephesians. He's not only the founder, but he's the head. He has the right to come in and do whatever he wants to with us, his people. He's a sovereign God. So, preacher, uh, why this, why that? Well, let's ask God because he's in charge. You ever thought about it that way? First of all, this morning, I want to talk about to you on this road to, Ema on this road to Emmaus. Number one, as a church... Uh, I know a church here in our town who's going to do an encore production of the Easter presentation they did last week because they were so blessed the, uh, last week. They're going to do it again this week. I'm asking a question. If we can redo a musical, should we not also keep the spirit of resurrection alive in the church Jesus started every week? We don't just talk about resurrection on Easter Sunday. You know, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday. People in our county don't even know what Easter is all about. I ask them questions, and they have no clue what we're talking about. 
we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because there's a good possibility if they don't know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. They don't know about the resurrection. They're not going to make the first resurrection. They're going to make the second resurrection. The first resurrection is the resurrection of the just. The second resurrection takes place exactly 1,007 years after the first one as a resurrection for the unjust. You do not want to take part in the resurrection of the unjust. You want to be in the first one. Amen. Praise God. I'm on the first load. I'm leaving out of here. Amen. I'll be leaving while you'll be grieving if you stand here without Jesus to call on. You ever heard that song? Praise God, I'm leaving out of here. This world is not my home. It makes me want to sing this morning. It makes me want to shout this morning. To know that Jesus knows me by name. By the way, he's got my name down in the book of life. He's got it recorded the very second, the very moment that I called out upon him as personal Savior. He put it down in the Lamb's book of life. There's no eraser on the other end of the pencil that can take my name out of the book of life. I'm his and he is mine. My Jesus, I love thee. Yes. Do you sing to God? Do you sing to his son, Jesus Christ? He's worthy of our praise, is he not? Why do you think we can sing like Jesus did in the church? Jesus sang a victory song when he went back to the church that he started. I, I kind of imagine it was kind of like, oh, victory in Jesus. He was singing about his power over death and hell and the grave. Up from the grave he arose, did he not? Hey, wh what's wrong with the most of us that don't have a song in our heart and praise on our lips? Where is our praise this morning? Hmm. We got puffiness, but we don't have praise. We have proudness, but we don't have praise. You're not going to have both. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, preoccupations. Many of us, our mind is a thousand miles away from what we're studying here in the Word of God this morning. And if everybody was to be honest, somebody would have to say, ouch, oh me, instead of amen. Am I right? NBA playoffs. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet, but we're not thinking about, about the precious Word of God. Word of God will keep you from the Bible. The Bible will keep you from uh, the, the sin. Will keep you from the Bible, or the Bible will keep you from sin. Which is it? Have you been in the Word of God this week? There's no worship on Sunday because there's been no worship through the week. I'm asking you the question this morning, what road are you on this morning? There was a dialogue between Jesus and these two men on the road to Emmaus. The Bible says that Jesus took another form. They didn't recognize him. What do you think about that? You think Jesus could come in here on Sunday morning and we not recognize him? He said, be careful to entertain strangers, for in so doing, you entertain angels unaware. He also said, where two or three of us are gathered together in his name. He said, there am I in the midst. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. He's a friend who always cares and understands. Did you know the unseen hand this morning, the unseen, unseen welcome guest in this service this morning, and you are welcome, Jesus, and your Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Jesus is in the midst of where his people are at. When we're praising, you said, preacher, why don't we have one more song? Because I wanted to praise him just a little bit more. I said I wanted to brag on Jesus just a little bit more. I think he's worthy of our praise. I think he's worthy of an encore production of an Easter cantata. I think we ought to praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is good. God is good. You ever sing that when you were little? Woo! But it, the, the, listen, then it says he disappeared. You ever wonder where Jesus went in your life? He was walking with him, he was talking with him, he was getting answered to prayer, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, whoop! Your prayers didn't go any higher than a ceiling. Your prayers were like brass, they just hung around, they just stayed put down here on gravity, pulled them down to the ground. My soul, 
I say that we ought to keep the spirit of resurrection alive every time the doors of this church are open. I thank God for what he's done here on the corner of Three Rivers and Dito Road these last 40 years. We're going to celebrate 41 years here in June. The first week of June, mark your calendar. Please don't take vacation the first week of June. You'll be sorry. You'll miss out on the presence of Jesus. What happens when we miss a church service? We miss the presence of Jesus. We had the presence of Jesus here last Sunday night. Woo, what you talking about? People got saved. Little boy got baptized. Holy Spirit came in. Man, we stayed around here talking to one another. Did not our hearts burn within us? You know what that was? That was the agency of the Holy Spirit of God. I can't explain. I can't put it into words. Vocabulary will fail me every time. But when Jesus shows up, you'll know about it. I said, when the presence of Jesus, hey, I want y'all looking right up here. What are y'all doing over there? The presence of Jesus Christ in your life, it will be known, it will be obvious, it will be manifested, it will be real. Hey, by the way, if church ain't real to you, you might as well stay home. If you come to court girls or talk to people or a social event, that's not what the church is in order for. The church is look, the church is in business to seek after lost souls, to know the presence of Jesus Christ in our life and his sweet Holy Spirit. Secondly, I want to say on our journey with God, do we have Jesus? Do we have him in a different form? Jesus was walking with these people and they didn't even recognize him. I wonder how many times our Lord has been so close to us within arm's length and we didn't even know it. We had no clue. He was sitting right next to us at church. There was a man not long ago, a pastor. He dressed up one Sunday instead of putting on his real pretty nice suit like pastor wears and a nice tie. By the way, if you're looking to see me, what color ties I wear or, or suits I wear, you came for the wrong reason. By the way, I, I shop at the thrift shop if anybody wants to know. But uh, he, uh, he dressed up that morning like a homeless man, the pastor did. Nobody knew who he was. He let his beard grow out. He, he, he let his grooming habits, uh, uh, he, he became, uh, if you will, he, he became uh, something less, uh, you know, than what was nice. And he just came in, and guess what? Nobody talked to him. Nobody. They just kind of shunned him. They kind of didn't want anything to do with him. Are you listening? He got up in the pulpit and he said, hey, folks, he took his hat off. He took his wig off. And he said, okay, folks, this church has a lot of learning to do. We're not where we need to be. I don't think there was one Christian among us this morning. Didn't shake my hand. Didn't make me feel welcome in the service. Is, is what we have on, he said, is what we have on what dictates who I speak to? When we're at fellowship time? You never know. When we miss the presence of Jesus Christ, you'll be sorry. Hey, when we miss that handshake, you know what he said in Matthew 25? He said, if you do it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So when we go to the sick and when we go to the prison and when we preach to those people over there who are less fortunate than we are, when we go to the, uh, the convalescent home, when we go over to uh, the uh, uh, brother Larry was in the hospital this week, when we go over there and visit the sick and comfort them with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God, guess what? Jesus says, you've done it unto me. By the way, Brother Larry made it church today. He wanted to give praise to God. He wanted to give thanks unto our Lord. Amen? I'm asking the question, when's the last time the Lord's presence was known in your life? I mean, you knew it was him. I'm talking about the sweet Holy Spirit of God's presence. You'll know it. So how do you know, preacher? Well, you'll know. And by the way, we're going to be known as we're known. If you're unrighteous here, the scripture says you're going to be unrighteous there. Amen. In other words, he's not going to try to fluff it up and make you look good in front of all the other people. If you weren't good down here, he's not going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, if you weren't faithful. Amen, Brother Jason? We're going to be judged just like we are when he comes. 
You know what some of us don't have to say? Some of us don't have to say, what was me? I'm undone, Lord. I didn't take to heart the word of God. I didn't take serious my walk with God. Jesus sat with me with these dear people and broke bread with them. And notice it says they constrained him to abide with him. And you know what? That's, what we, that's where we need to be this morning. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, you can ask what you will. I love this. Are you listening? And it shall be given unto you. His words abide in you. They abound in your heart. That's the very thing that you think about the most. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide his words in my heart and I sh that I shall not sin against God, right? Am I right about that? Are we dead this morning? This, folk, this, pl this place is dead as at 3 o'clock in the morning. Listen to me now. If we're in the word of God, God's word says, if we abide in him and his words abide in us, we can ask what we will. Let me give you a for instance. I might not make it through my message this morning. Is that all right? I'm full. Is it okay if we're filled with the spirit of the Lord? Was on the bus route. We hadn't hardly had anybody get on the bus. I think we had a whole grand total of 17 people on the bus this morning, and we had only one more stop to make. Are you listening? I said, dear Lord, it'd be sure nice if you'd have 20 people waiting for us at that last stop. And I kind of said it under my breath, but Brother Pat, where are you? He's over in the children. There he is. He's back with the baby. He's my witness. Are you, are you ready for this? There was 18 precious souls standing at the corner when we, when we got there. 18 souls. So 18 and 17 is 35. He went to Temple Christian. No. Uh, 35 souls on the bus. Now, how, what, what would have happened had we not prayed? You have not because you asked. What would have happened if, you know, we didn't have God's word abiding in us? You think that just happenstance, circumstance, just coincidentally happened? The Bible says that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He knows what you're thinking. Let me encourage you to think the right things about people. Let me encourage you to think about the word of God. Think on these things. Let me encourage you to know that Jesus Christ is walking in and out among us. His spirit's presence. He doesn't need to be offended. You say, why, preacher, don't you want people jumping up in the church and talking out loud and passing notes and playing their Nintendo games in the church? I'll tell you because the Holy Spirit can be offended. Somebody might need to be saved. And you're sitting there stinking up into the nostrils of God, all this ugly thoughts. Stinking thinking. You know, we can grieve God's Holy Spirit and never say a word. We can sit in here with our head down the whole service and we're just stinking in the nostrils of God. But you know what? Jesus came and when he came, you know what he did? He broke bread with them. I like the thought of that. In his glorified body, he served them supper. Praise the Lord. They can strain this Jesus Christ to abide with him. And hey, you know what? That's the way it is when Jesus passes your way. Praise God. Sunday night was one of those nights. He blessed us with food, spiritual food. Look in verse number 30, what it says. It says, Praise God, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. Oh, praise God when the Lord blesses your life. Can you say amen right there? You know, a lot of times I think we would live longer, we'd be healthier if we would properly bless our food before we eat it. Not rush into that. God, thank you for the food. I've heard some people say it this way. Thank you for the mess. That's not properly blessing the food. I know we've all been guilty of rushing into it, especially when it looks so wonderful. I 
think another thing, our life needs to also be blessed by the Lord. He blessed these people. You think he can bless us? He's no respecter of person. The Bible says that their eyes were open. They knew him. Question this morning, do you know him? Has your eyes been opened to the Lord? Do you respect him? Do you have a fear of God in your life? Do you understand that we live and move and have our very being in him? We're not here simply because we deemed it necessary, but because he deemed it necessary. The eyes were open. Could you give a testimony today like these people did? These men who were walking with Jesus on the Emmaus Road, did not our hearts burn within us? After they uh, heard him expound the word of God and they ate and they, he broke bread with him and blessed it and uh, he, he, he disappeared in front of them and they went back and they told Peter and the disciples what had happened. They'd seen Jesus. Their eyes had been opened. They gave a testimony. I asked the question, if I were to ask you to stand and say, hey, I want to say something good about my Lord here this morning. He's been awfully good to me. I think I'll praise him just a little bit. I'll thank him. Could you say something? Would you be ashamed to say anything about our Lord? God forgive us if we are. But it says he began at Moses and the prophets and told them how Messiah was supposed to come. Wow. He began at the prophets and Moses expounding the word of God, teaching them as to who he was, even yea, back in the Old Testament scriptures. The scripture says, search the scriptures. And John 5 and verse number 29 where that said, there was no other scriptures other than the Old Testament. So yes, it is important that you study the word of God. All of it. Amen. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing what? The word of truth. You want truth in your life? You want to end up in the right uh, place in your life? You want to be on the right road this morning? You want to stay on that narrow path? You don't have to get in the word of truth. You're going to have to rightly divide the word of truth. Do you know you can wrongly divide it? You know you can take it out of its context? You can make this Bible say most anything you want it to say. You better have Holy Spirit giving you insight, giving you abilities to understand the precious word of God. Amen. The Bible says in John 1 and verses 3 uh, through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. You know who that was talking about in the first book of John, the first uh, chapter of John? Talking about Jesus, the Word of God. Now we have a written Word. But we have a literal pre-incarnate word of God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not all of what God wants you to know, but it's all of what, uh, not all of what he knows, but it's all of what he wants you to know. You know why Jesus could quote those verses when the devil came to him in the desert in the, uh, the hour of temptation, those 40 days and nights he was out there being tempted? You know why the Lord could quote the verses? Because he was the word. Let his word, let his love dwell in you richly. This is the love letter from heaven he wants you to know about. He wants you to go to heaven and be with him forever and ever and ever. I was talking to some ladies here uh, yesterday over in Diarrhea. You won't believe this. They said they didn't want to go to heaven. They wanted to stay down here on earth. I just started quoting the Bible. Let not your hearts be troubled, ladies. If you believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am. There ye may be also. Jesus wants everybody to go to heaven. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, the scripture says. And they said, no, pastor. No, it's not God's will for everyone to go to heaven. Only 144,000 is going to go to heaven. Don't you know? I said, don't you know those 144,000 people over there mentioned in the book of Revelation are Jewish people? Holy Spirit, don't let me fall down from here. And then I said, hey, there was another condition that had to be met for those Jewish people, 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. I said, not only did they have to be Jewish, they had to be virgins. I didn't want to ask him, did anybody qualify? <laughs> you know.
You know, we got a lot of hocus pocus going on out here in this old sinful world. Heard the devotion uh, yesterday at the bus meeting. Man got up and he said, you know, my former religion was this. If I wanted to go out and party hard and live like the devil and carouse with women, do whatever I wanted to do, I could go to the church and buy an indulgence. I thought, what is that? Are you telling me that you can live like you want to as long as you pay the priest a little extra, a little bonus where he can go off and spend some time over somewhere else on a beach somewhere? As long as you pay him, you'll be all right. As long as you pay him, you can get out of purgatory. As long as you pay him, you can have a little indulgences. That sounds like a devil religion. My God didn't make anything that's, uh, that, look, that, I'm telling you, my friend, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come of the Father but by me. Does that sound like anything to you, what Jesus would do? I tell you, if you're all hung up in religion, you need more religion. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to let him pass your way this morning. You need to get in on the blessing. You need to let him break the five loaves and the two fishes in your life. Bless your life. Anybody here want to turn down a blessing? Raise your hand if you want to turn down a blessing. Anybody here want to receive a blessing? Let me see your hands. I don't want to turn down any of the blessings of the Lord. Oh, no, Brother Joe. I want all of what God has for me. I want to be under the spout where the glory comes out. I want blessings upon blessings. Why? Because Jesus is all about blessing his people. He said there's a mansion waiting for us. Somebody said in my version, Pastor, it says apartments. I said, look, if it's just apartments, I don't want to go. I got better than an apartment here. I'm going to stay here with those little elder ladies that wanted to stay on the earth. God bless their little hearts. Okay. You know why Jesus is so good to us, folks? I'll tell you why. It's not our philosophies nor our opinions. Everybody has an opinion like the nose on your face. Give me chapter and verse when you start talking about eternity especially, please. Give me something from the word of God. Give me, give me chapter and verse, what it is that you believe. The Bible says God resists the proud, but to give grace to the humble. Do you believe God can give us the wisdom that we need in this old world to walk with him on that narrow road all the way to glory? Amen. The road to Emmaus this morning. What about it? What a beautiful adventure with our Lord. You're on a journey too, by the way. It started the very day you got saved, but didn't end there. It's going to go all the way to glory. Where are you at this morning? Would God and Jesus Christ himself be the welcome guest in your life? Now, if you're not living for him, let me clue you in. It's not an indulgence permit that you can get and the Lord will pass your way. No, 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 no. If you're out of fellowship with him this morning, you're going to have to confess your sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. And then you can know the presence of the Lord in your life again. Then you can have answer to prayer again. Then you can feel God's Holy Spirit moving and working in your life, manifesting himself to you. Not beforehand. If my people which are called my name will humble themselves and pray and, and seek my face and turn. I like that Old Testament word, return. The same word as repent. And turn from their wicked ways. Then only then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Don't hear much preaching on repentance anymore. It's been a long time since I heard a message on repentance. It's been a long time since I've heard that a revival broke out too. Say what you will, John the Baptist preached it, Jesus Christ preached it, the Apostle Paul preached it. It's not working your way to heaven, it's the condition of your heart. It's the change of the mind, the attitude, the emotions, and the will. It's an about face. It's turning from and turning towards. By the way, every Baptist church in America, their constitution will say this under their statement of faith, repentance and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know you don't have repentance on your own? It's a gift of God. If you look up in Timothy, you can find it there that he has to give it to you. You don't have anything. You don't have faith. You don't have repentance, but you need both. God forgive us. I sure don't want to miss out on the blessing, do you? Oh, listen, there's real wisdom in what's already been said from God this morning. I'm going to ask this question. 
these disciples, when they met up with Jesus and they knew it was him and their eyes were open, they ran to tell people. That's the question. When's the last time you told something about what the Lord had done in your life? Answer prayer, salvation, eternal life, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Where are you at on this journey of life? Which road are you on? Can I sing? I'm in the way. I'm going to sing anyway. The bright and shining way. I'm in that glory line way. Heaven is near and the way draweth dear. For I'm in the glory line way. I'm in the glory line way. I'm in the glory line way. Heaven is near and the way draweth clear. For I'm in the glory line way. Now our forefathers would sing songs like that. Our forefathers would sing this. There'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Mama said they sang this as a, as a little girl. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. There'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills of God. Heaven was real, those old folks back in the old country church. You know why they knew how to humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek the face of God. You say that in a fundamental church today, you're thought of as a heretic and they mark you and they won't have anything to do with you. You know what I think about that? That's why I'm an independent. Leave me alone. It's me and God on this walk with God. On this narrow road. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody shout in here. How long has it been since you shouted? Let me tell you, it's probably because you don't have nothing to shout about. No joy. No answered prayer. No walk with God. No Emmaus Road experience because Jesus' presence is so far from you. God help us today. Jesus speaks through his word. I'm going to, I want to encourage you before we leave here the building today, get in the Word of God. Saturate yourself in the Word of God. I wouldn't do a thing. I would not step one step without God being with me. You better make sure he's with you on this long journey to heaven. If you're in the will of God this morning, draw a circle around it and keep moving. Move on with God. Amen. Let's bow our heads, shall we? Father, thank